<laughs> Greetings viewers and welcome to today's episode of Air at the Car Guy where we will be replacing the rear struts on this 2008 Acura TL. I should point out that even though I'm working on a 2008 Acura TL, all this information will also apply to Honda Accords of the same vintage. Here are the struts that I'll be installing on my TL today. As you can see, the part number is the same for both. I'm installing original equipment struts, and I strongly, highly recommend original equipment dampers for your Hondas and Acuras. I haven't found anything in the aftermarket that works as well. However, you can purchase complete strut assemblies that come with the coil spring and all the other parts to it from Honda, and you can also purchase those out in the world from other companies as well. But my preference is for original equipment stuff. Before you get started with this job, it's probably not a bad idea to take the front seats and move them as far forward as you can possibly get them. Accessing things from underneath the vehicle is not nearly as difficult as this part of the job where you need to remove the rear seat assembly in order to access the top fasteners of the struts. Start by removing the bottom seat cushion. There are a couple of clips uh, underneath, which will be easier to show after I pull it out. But if they don't pull out, and I'll show you, pushing down on the seat is helpful. There we go, got one side. So if, they don't, if they're difficult to pull out, you gotta push down on the seat. It seems counterintuitive and then pull them out. So these clips are located in the middle of the rear seat. So feel up under there and you'll feel them. I'll show them to you in a second. Push down, pull out, lift up. All right, over here on the passenger side, and sort of so you, show you, there's a 10 millimeter fastener. It's right there that needs to be removed in order to uh, get this lower portion the rest of the way out. <laughs> Get you the rest of the seat. So these are those releases that I was talking about. There's one of these on each side. So as I said, if you're having trouble pulling it out, push down on the seat a bit and it should come out a little bit easier. But there's one on this side and also one on the other side. And on the driver's side, virtually in the same location as the original fastener you removed to get the uh, other seat out is another 10 millimeter fastener. And then down on the lower corners of each side, there's another 10 millimeter. Here's the one on the other side. Now for the hidden fasteners. There are gonna be two and they're underneath the headrest. Uh, so there's a little plastic switch or whatever down in here. And you can actually pull the headrest out. There's a release for the headrest. Now this is where the hidden fastener is. So to see the seam right here, if you separate it like this, and I, it's gonna be impossible for me to show you until it's out, but behind this and through this hole down at the bottom of it is another 10 millimeter that you need to loosen. You don't need to take this one all the way out. You just need to loosen it a little bit. And uh, you'll see what I mean when I get this up off of here. So go down through, feel around until I hit the fastener. Okay, I'm on the fastener. Once again, you don't need to remove it, just loosen it. Careful, you don't wanna lose your socket down in there. In fact, you might wanna put a piece of tape around the end of it so that when you try to remove it, it doesn't get pulled through and go through here. You don't necessarily have to remove the headrest. I just think it's easier. Because as long as you can expose this area, you're good. It says you need to replace the battery. Gave it a super battery. Before I run to the other side, I'm just gonna move the seatbelt to the side a little bit. Come to think of it, it's okay if you take these all the way out and then put them loosely back in before you reinstall it. Middle seatbelt can just sort of stay. careful of those little plastic covers. I personally don't care about mine, but the little plastic covers on the sill plates you might consider removing before doing this to avoid any damage. This is where that bolt goes in. This is why I said you don't have to remove the whole thing necessarily. You can just push up on it. I'm fishing here and see if I, yeah, there it is. So it's probably just easiest to loosen these all the way when you remove it. They fit up in here like this. So that I don't lose track, I'm just gonna thread it into place. So when I put it back together, 
goes together easier and I don't lose track of it. With the rear seat removed, you can see where the fasteners are to the top of the strut. Now the instructions say to remove this whole deck lid and everything, but you can sneak back in here. These are 14 millimeter fasteners. There's two of them. There's one here and one on the opposite side in the back. Uh, remove those two fasteners and the strut will come out. And that's the same on both sides. Now you can do this in any order you see fit. Uh, you can start down here or start on the inside. Eventually you're gonna have to do both. I prefer to start on the inside and then work to the outside. Now that we're outside, remove the wheels. Stabby cords, forgot about those. Here's the entire reason I'm replacing the strut because this one leaked out. Also, I heard a noise coming from this area when going over bumps, but anytime you see any leakage around struts like this, nine times out of 10, it's a bad strut and needs replacement. So this is why we're here. There's one through bolt that holds the bottom strut on. Uh, this nut is welded to that uh, piece there, but I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of penetrating oil uh, before I get started. And I'll do that to both sides. This is 17 millimeter. I want to get something to knock this out with. Remember the two 14s that were holding it on at the top? It's gonna to be my weapon of choice. Just a 3 8 ratchet and a deep 14, and that will clear the top of it. I like to go for the back one first. It's easier to access. Well, I think it's easier to do the last one to being close to you. And you can push this up a little bit to get access in there. Ah, who needs electric tools? I've got hands. One, two. Here's the problem. The strut is hitting the stabilizer link right here. Last thing I want to do is disconnect the stabilizer link because I can almost guarantee that I'll have to purchase a stabilizer link if I try to remove this. But if I did remove it, it would make this whole job a lot easier. Maybe soak it with some penetrating oil just to, you know, be preemptive. Now there's an Allen head on the inside of this uh, stud that's sticking out. Um, the thing is, is whenever I try to get into that thing, I almost always strip it out. The other option is to like grab the other side with a pair of vice grips. Like I said, at the end of the day, this may end up with me having to replace stabilizer links, which may have to be included in your parts list if you're going to do this job. 14 millimeter. This is really weird. And I, I should keep quiet until I'm done, but. I almost thought it was coming off. Be careful of this ABS wire while you're in here. I'm going under it. Now I'm gonna try to hold the back of the stud with this vice grip since it's out far enough now. Still seems viable, doesn't look like I'll have to replace it. Yes. I win. Now, if you're installing quick struts or complete assemblies, these are about, I think, 50 to $70 more from Honda for a complete assembly. Uh, you just put the new assembly in and do the reverse of what you just saw. Uh, as far as me, I have a spring compressor. I'm just gonna replace the damper portion and uh, install it back in the car afterwards. Same thing on this side, hopefully. Sweet. Be very careful not to damage the rubber boot. Go 
that way too. Now I'm super fortunate to have this wall mounted spring compressor that is about the safest thing you can use to compress these coil springs and replace these struts. These rear struts aren't as bad as front struts. What I would recommend if you don't have something like this is one of two options, getting the complete assembly struts that you can just put up in there and not have to mess with this at all, or you can remove your struts and maybe take them someplace to where they have a spring compressor like this and have them replace them for you. Either way, I, I think that's a safer option. What I want to do is mark like where this sits because it's important that this goes back in the same way it came out. In other words, uh, if we look at this, these studs are sort of in line with what's happening down here. If we get this on here and it's off, and you know, a few degrees this way or that way, we'll have a hard time getting, you know, getting it reinstalled into the car. So I'm trying to make sure that as I do this, um, what I end up with in the end is something that We'll just go right in. So I want when I put the new strut in here for it to go in almost identically. This is where the spring will sit in this little notch here. The notch is similarly positioned. I'm just trying to get a feel for like when I install this up in here that it's going to virtually go in the same location. Wow, that is so done. <laughs> like, so done. Gross. This sleeve has virtually rusted into place and I need to remove it. Uh, penetrating oil has been pretty good to me so far. I'll let that soak in for a minute, but I'm trying to figure out a strategy that I can use to get in here and knock this loose. To avoid damage to this bushing, I'll just take this off right now. And thankfully it's split. I'm just going to try to open it up a little more with this chisel. This is where complete strut assemblies would uh, have taken care of this problem. The Allen socket that I'm using is a number five. So I'm using a number five Allen socket on the struts. I did it. Sweet. Now we need to transfer all this stuff from this strut over to the new strut. Mm. Now we're stripped down naked to the bare bones of it. But anytime you can do this with a strut like this, it's kind of junk. Garbage. Something I just do, and I've just done this, before I install any struts, I can press them a couple of times just to make sure that they're moving and flowing right. I have installed some aftermarket struts where I did not do this and it made a lot of noise. So I've just gotten in the practice of just doing it. I know, right? <laughs> this guy is on like this. Then above that is this, which is tapered. So the inside of this is tapered and the upper part of this is tapered. So this goes on this way, the flat side facing up like that. Next will come the uh, dust boot over the top of that. Then we've got that little washer. Then we have the sleeve. And then we have this guy, which faces up like that. I could go through the trouble to uh, clean up all the goop off of this, but this is my $200 car. I don't have to care. <laughs> I 
making sure that that spring is seated correctly on the strut because that's going to help position it where I want it. Truth be told, this is a nylock, um, nylon lock nut. You really should replace this. I'm reusing it. I don't feel bad about it, but just as an FYI, it's a good idea to replace that. Once the nut is tight, which it stopped where it wanted to stop, you don't need to run this down to the point of no return. That's sticking up about the same amount of threads as it was to start with. In fact, we can compare it to the other side, but uh, at this point, we uh, just want to take one last check to make sure it's seated down in here well. And with that, we're done. Now hopefully, everything up top stayed lined up. so good I'm prying down on the subframe back here and I'm on this upper control arm trying to avoid hitting the brakes I'm not going to damage that control arm with what I'm doing here I'm going to use this drift punch to go through the other side to sort of hold it in place so I can move it around to get the bolt started. First I have to get it somewhat in line. Once you got the drift punch in, you got like the most leverage. You can move it around really easily and put it where you want it. I'm sure there's a torque spec for that. I'm gonna wait and reconnect both stabilizer links at the same time, because as you can see, with both of them disconnected, I've got a lot more movement. If I connect one side now, it's gonna be more difficult to install the other side, so. We'll get the other side done and then do these last. Every once in a while I get a guy like this. And I think I stated this isn't my favorite thing to do, but Here's the deal. When you're using the gun, you tighten, you don't loosen. So when you're on this, you tighten. Remember, like I said, tighten, don't loosen. This one came apart a little differently. So the sleeve and everything stayed up in there. So just remove this piece, the dust boot. Like I came off nicely. Everything over here came apart swimmingly. So on the other one, the sleeve that goes through here and this bottom bushing that comes up through the other side. So there's another bushing like this underneath. And then you can see the top of the sleeve right there. So that's what came out uh, last time we did this. It did not this time, however. So bump stop. The bevel faces the bevel like that. Dust boot. Top washer. And just make sure that that lines up down in here when it goes together. So the spring can seat down in there. Anytime I've got the nut on, I'm always like, 
safe because there's no way that this can come apart now that I've got a few threads on this. So it's like, it's like the bomb is diffused. Spring is also seated properly in the strut. This is important when we go to reinstall. Yeah, one of these spring compressors, springs are no problem. I honestly don't think it matters which way this goes up in there. So I took advantage of the fact, like I said, I don't think it matters what way it goes up in there. It wasn't going in the one way, so I just turned it around. Now it seems to be more cooperative. Now, some viewers may look at that previous clip and have an issue with what I just did, and that's tightened that lower strut bolt while everything was up in the air. And they do have a point, so this is their point. So say this is the control arm here, and this is the bolt that I just tightened that goes through that strut. Well, the suspension is up in the air, hanging down, fully relaxed as far as it can go. Well, when I let the vehicle down onto the ground, what happens is that suspension will compress, and as it does, it's going to actually put a little bit of a twist or a little bit of stress on that bushing that's in the bottom of that strut that I just tightened when it was up in the air. So it's a real good idea to tighten things like that when it's on the ground and the weight of the vehicle is on it, that way you don't stress the bushings. So I'm gonna go back in there now, loosen those bolts and retighten them with the vehicle on the ground. I don't know if this will run down or not, but I'm gonna try and maybe to help it out a little bit. All right, that was the solution that worked. Needle nose vice grip so I can hold it all the way down. Let's try it on the other side. With everything connected underneath, uh, we got our two nuts up top to redo. That was my mind torque wrench going off. Thing to remember when putting the seat back is make sure your seat belts are over the top of the seat before you do your final lock it into place. And be careful of the sill plates once again. They have to be over the top like that before you do your final. And it just falls into place when you got them hooked in and you'll feel it. I'd recommend that you get the other fastener started first and make sure the seatbelts all work. Super important. I think it was, yeah, it's that side that gets the longer bolt that goes through both this side. You just have the lower one that goes in like this. Now that they're threaded in, I'm gonna run them down. All right, now with 
this. Pull the seats up, seat belt buckles up first before you fully commit. That one went right in. That one went right in. Those clips just sort of fall right in. And last but not least, that final hidden fastener. And there we have rear strut replacement on a 2008 Acura TL. Also will work for Honda Accords of the same vintage. It is a little fiddly. Uh, getting the back seat out and that kind of thing is probably, in my opinion, going to be one of your most difficult things. Also, as mentioned, you might want to consider getting some rear stabilizer links just in case. Uh, because those might get destroyed in the process of removal and replacement of these struts. I do re recommend complete assemblies. I'll put a link in the description to the Honda assemblies, which I recommend. There are other ones out there, but personally, I prefer Honda parts on Honda vehicles. To me, they work out best. Anyway, links to that in the description, along with additional information, so please check the description if you have questions. If you have automotive questions not covered in this video, I ask that you head to EricTheCarGuy.com. I'll link that in the description for you. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video with the entire world, because it's so awesome, right? And I hope it helped you. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.